Meet Greya, a cute and quiet redhead with horns, wings, and a tail. Greya has calm mornings and she finishes her business quickly and efficiently. Then there's Anne, still drowsy Anne who is at war with the clock as she rushes to put her socks on. Spoiler alert, the clock is beating her tush. In the cafeteria, Greya is all alone, and she can only stare longingly at a group of chattering friends as they pass by. On the other hand, the cafeteria just bursts into life with greetings of, Good morning, princess! As soon as as Anne walks in. The difference between the two is just like night and day, yet Anne seems excited to see Greya. She joins her at her table and while having breakfast, Anne tells her not to be so formal. She's a dragonborn princess herself. To this, the shy Greya just tells her fellow princess that she still hasn't finished the book she recommended. Still, she's already learning much about the kingdom of Manaria and about Anne too. Anne is glad to hear this. She explains that their school library is divided into several languages, and it's practically a bookworm's haven with countless volumes available. As a matter of fact, she saw one earlier about the country where dragonborns originate from. Anne is curious about what it's like there, and Greya explains that there are many big animals unlike where they're at. When Anne asks her friend why she entered the academy. Greya reveals that her mother was once a student there. She subtly emphasizes that she's half dragon, half human, but Anne simply ignores this with a cheerful grin. As the two princesses carry on their conversation, another girl named Lou arrives, desperately calling for Anne. In her rush to get to the princess, she even trips on a vine and slams into concrete. The other girls become concerned, and Anne quickly helps her up. Lou reports trouble brewing in the library and asks Anne to come quickly. She drags Anne away, who shouts out an apology to Greya and tells her to wait. At the library, students hold a giant flaming bird captive with magic, preventing it from running amok. However, it seems like they can't hold it off much longer. It turns out that Lou accidentally stepped on it, which fueled its rage. So Anne uses her ice bind magic to seal up the giant bird. Anne's spell is effective. A little too effective, you might say. The entire library froze up, floor to ceiling. After that fiasco, Anne apologizes to another student present during the incident named Hannah. Hannah tells Anne it's not her fault, as she was the one who asked her to seal the guardian of the library. Hannah laments about her inability to handle the situation by herself, saying she's a failure of a class president. Not knowing what to do, Anne asks if there's anything else she can help with. However, Hannah merely dismisses her with a sad smile on her her face. After meeting with Hannah, Anne returns to where Greya is, surprised to see her still waiting in the same spot as earlier. Anne shares that the guardian of the library went berserk and she had to seal it using ice magic. She's feeling a bit down, but Greya's simple, you did well, instantly lifts her spirits. Greya bashfully remarks that Anne might have left her waiting for too long. With this, she asks if Anne is hungry, and the princess replies that she hasn't had anything to eat since breakfast. Thus, the two girls go grab something sweet to munch. On. A few days later, Greya squirms in intense pain while glued to a hospital bed. She struggles to stay still while Hannah and a teacher named Miss Miranda watch over her. Hannah reports that all their tests are producing abnormal readings, but they have no idea what's actually happening to the girl. Oh, poor Greya. Hannah asks Miss Mira if there's any other way they can diagnose Greya, but she replies that she's never seen any medical treatment records for Dragonborn. Suddenly, the doors fling open, and a sweating Anne appears. She's clearly rushed in as fast as possible to get to Greya. The staff mentions that they had already tried several healing spells, but none had any effect. Medicinal herbs and compounded medication were also administered, but to no avail. Furthermore, they didn't discover any visible wounds after inspecting Greya's entire body. Hannah guesses that Greya might be experiencing something only dragonborns can suffer from. Anne holds onto Greya's hand all this time, a magic circle floating above their palms. Lou then enters the room carrying a tall stack of books, but her lovable klutz slips on the floor, causing everything to fall over. Among the many volumes Lou has brought with her, there's one about medicine for goblins and another about the biology of insects. Miss Mira even finds a forbidden text that students aren't allowed to read. Lou explains that when she went to the library and mentioned Greya was in trouble, the person at the counter lent her all the books. The word forbidden quickly captures Anne's attention. Confidently, she gets up and dashes out of the room, asking everyone else to take care of Greya. Anne, followed by her bodyguard, Owen, makes her way to a secluded library region in a accessible to other students. After activating multiple switches with magic, Anne and Owen run through a hallway illuminated by dim orange lights. Back at the infirmary, Hannah guesses that Anne likely went to the forbidden archives of the library. Anne encounters various terrains and ecosystems in her quest for a cure for whatever is ailing Greya. From floating bookshelves taken straight from Doctor Strange to enchanting waterfalls, Anne 
perseveres to find anything that can have the Dragonborn. In the end, Anne and Owen are back at the library and continue looking for the ingredients written on the princess's tablet. They've acquired all the items listed except for one thing, a dragon scale. Where the heck are they supposed to find this? Meanwhile, Greya becomes engulfed in a gentle light, with her wings and tail gleaming brightly. Anne runs into the room and sees her in this condition. The scales on Greya's tail crack open, as if the girl is shedding her skin. Anne, Hannah, Lou, and Miss Mira watch in awe as the dragonborn princess transforms before their very eyes. By the end of her majestic metamorphosis, Greya's hair is much longer. She wakes up as if having been in a deep slumber. Her fever is also gone, along with the unbearable pain she experienced just a few minutes ago. Everyone, especially Anne, is relieved to see her doing fine. Some time later, Greya explains that she was just molting. It's a normal process that sometimes happens when she grows bigger, and Anne jokingly asks if her chest got bigger too. Greya sincerely feels sorry that Anne and the rest did so much for her. However, the princess tells her not to worry about it. In the end, she wasn't really able to do anything anyway. Well, except Anne did do so much. She went to great lengths to find a remedy for her friend when Greya would have been just fine if if they'd left her alone. But of course, she's not telling her all that, right? Anne goes on to say that if she'd known Greya was just molting, she would have merely hung around when she was all hot and bothered. Okay, pretty suggestive, but you got your drift. Greya shyly asks if she was that much of a mess, and Anne cheerfully confirms. The dragonborn was quite a sight to behold. Greya notices that Anne is hiding something behind her back, and once she takes a quick look, she clarifies whether it's her discarded skin. The dragonborn blushes at the thought of this, and an equally flustered Anne spells out that she was thinking of keeping it as a memento of their growth. Still embarrassed, Greya tells her friend she's a dummy. The next morning, Anne knocks on Greya's door. The dragonborn goes to open it, and her fellow princess notes that she's cut her hair. Anne invites her to go shopping in town, even bringing some clothes that fit Greya's new size after her transformation. Greya obliges and off they go. Anne puts on a disguise so no one could recognize her, but it's preposterously ineffective. The townspeople can still identify their princess at first glance. After interacting with the villagers, Anne and Greya proceed to their shopping. They visit different shops and browse the vast selections of goods they sell, even having dessert on the way. After a while, they find a mysterious alley and decide to explore it. The pair of princesses stumble upon a different part of the town, a gloomier, more desolate area. Greya remarks that the place is kind of dreary. There's no one around either. Soon enough, they find a boutique and decide to head inside. Their eyes dart towards a mannequin glass in strange clothing. The top looks like gym clothes, while the bottom looks like it's part of a swimsuit. Suddenly, the shop owner welcomes them, saying that these are unique combat garments from a land to the east. But hmm, she seems familiar. Wait, that's Miss Mira. Anne is shocked to find out that this place is Miss Mira's store. Miss Mira explains that she's a seamstress, so she wanted to try her hand at making some additional profit from her hobby. Yes, girl, get that coin. Greya asks whether the academy even permits their staff to take on extra jobs and Miss Mira suddenly gets tongue-tied. I guess the school knows nothing about her side hustle, huh? With this, Miss Mira tells the two girls they can take whatever they want, but in return, they have to keep this a secret from the academy. Anne has loads of fun trying out different clothes, but Miss Mira doesn't seem like she feels the same as she calculates her losses. Meanwhile, Greya quietly watches her friend show off her various outfits. Soon enough, Anne and Miss Mira decide it's time for Greya to try on something too. Despite her futile attempts to escape. The dragonborn princess falls to the two ladies' heinous whims. She tries on a beautiful purple dress, and the outfit looks so good on her that Anne decides they're taking it too. After their shopping spree, Greya and Anne munch on some ice cream cones. They sit on a stairwell facing the boats floating on the river and enjoy their cold treats together. As soon as they're finished, they hop on a boat themselves. The sun is setting, and Greya asks Anne if she's not fun of being on boats. The princess responds that she's totally fine, but she's grabbing on to Greya's tail as if hanging on for dear life. Anne confesses that she actually can swim, and she's never told this to anyone. However, she can use her magic to float, dive, and walk on water. Greya tells her friend that it's good to know that there are things even she is terrible at. Afterwards, Greya thanks Anne for taking her to town that day and picking a new outfit for her. Anne says it isn't a problem as she had fun too. In her usual timid demeanor, Greya tells her friend she'd love to go out again sometime. <laughs> This is just purely wholesome. Anne feels so overjoyed to hear this that she stands up. Suddenly, the boat starts rocking, and Anne falls on Greya. The two lock eyes for a moment until Anne pulls away. Greya asks if Anne's okay, and the princess responds that she's fine. The two remain silent
around for a while until Anne breaks the ice by saying Miss Mira gave them magic pajamas. She then asks if she can come and sleep at her place sometime, but to her surprise, Greya says no. That night in her room, Anne contemplates why Greya wouldn't want her to stay over. Meanwhile, Greya is preparing to sleep in her own room. When she was a kid, she picked up a bad habit that she couldn't stop doing. It turns out she sleeps with just her delicates on, clutching her tail as if it's a plushie. She feels that sleeping in this position is so embarrassing that she can't let Anne see her like this. The next day, Greya plays a pleasing melody on the piano while Anne dances to the rhythm. After a graceful twirl, Anne purposely falls onto the soft grass, relaxing. She approaches Greya and comments on how she performs so beautifully. The dragonborn princess humbly replies it's nothing special, adding that she wishes to practice more. Anne suggests they return to this tranquil place tomorrow, but Greya reminds her that they have exams coming up. The dragonborn wants to focus on her studies, so she won't be coming for a while. Anne can only reply with a forlorn, okay. Sometime later after school, Anne leaves her classroom. Owen asks her where she's headed, and she replies that everyone looks pretty busy with exam preparations, so she's thinking of borrowing the next volume of the series in her hands. With this, Owen accompanies her to the library. There, Anne spots Hannah tutoring other students, and the princess decides to teach them some of the stuff she knows. Hannah praises Anne's method of deducing the results, but remarks that it might need to be simplified. Keeping Anne's explanation in mind, Hannah and her pupils start from the beginning using a more straightforward method. Feeling out of place, Anne leaves the library and sits on the bench outside. Suddenly, she spots Greya carrying a huge pile of books. Anne excitedly approaches her friend, asking, asking if she needs a hand, but Greya tells her not to worry and implies that the princess needs to focus on herself. The dragonborn is sure her friend already has enough on her plate, so she goes on her way. Anne continues to spend her time alone, occasionally glancing around to see many groups of friends hanging out and chatting with each other. No doubt the princess feels incredibly lonely without Greya's presence. The same thing happens the next day. Everyone else seems to be focused on studying for the upcoming exams and helping each other out. Everyone except for Anne, who eats her lunch alone on a bench. Greya catches Anne rising from her seat and walking away. She doesn't call out to her friend, though. After a few minutes of strolling, Anne sets foot in a no-entry zone. Here, she recalls the sound of the piano playing, and one of her old memories springs to mind. Following the tune led her to the sight of Greya playing the instrument. Anne asks herself, Who's that? While listening to the dragonborn play. Back to the present, it's raining hard, and Grey is not there playing the piano. The day of the exams arrives. Each student is giving it their all, hoping that the sweat, blood, and tears they've shed over studying will bear fruitful results. Anne becomes the first student in her class to finish the exam. She quickly submits her test paper and leaves the room. Miss Mira glances at her paper, only to find that she got all the items correct again. Wow, oh, that's amazing. This princess isn't just blessed with magic, she's also an academic genius. Immediately after the exam, Greya heads to the no-entry zone and finds Anne sitting by the piano. She's just hitting a single key and not really playing it. Greya approaches her, and Anne's surprised that she came. Greya asks her how exams went, and the princess blurts out that she was lonely. At first, this startles Greya, but the look of shock on her face transforms into a heartfelt smile, saying she knew. Greya suggests they try playing a duet, and Anne says it's been ages. The princess even wonders if she can still play. Greya recalls the first time she met Anne. She had just finished playing a piece on the piano, and when she turned to look, Anne was standing there with a big smile on her face. Now, the two play a piece together, and the lovely sounds echo throughout the place. As Anne and Greya enjoy their lives in Menaria, they encounter various situations that only serve to strengthen their friendship. Each day, the bond between the two princesses grows deeper as they learn new things about each other. With their unbreakable connection, Anne and Greya can surely face any magical challenge that comes their way. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.